In 2011, the United States was gripped by the salacious court case of a young Florida mother, Casey Anthony, accused of murdering her doe-eyed toddler. As more details emerged, it became obvious that the full story wasn't that simple. Here's the messed up truth about Casey Anthony. In December 2008, two-and-a-half-year-old Kaylee Anthony's body was found in a plastic bag in a small wooded low-lying area barely off the road just outside an Orlando subdivision, about half a mile from her grandparents' home. By the time Kaylee was officially found, her remains had substantially decomposed, greatly reducing the amount of evidence investigators could find. Near her body was a Gatorade bottle containing chloroform, according to Criminal Brief. Reuters reported that when Kaylee's grandfather, George Anthony, had picked up Casey's car from an impound lot, he noted an overwhelming odor of decay in the trunk. Having spent decades as a police detective, he recognized what this meant. The impound lot owner and the police, smelling the trunk and seeing the stain in there the size of a small body, made some unsavory assumptions about what may have occurred. According to the book Presumed Guilty by her attorney Jose Baez, Casey depended on her parents to take on most of the work of caring for Kaylee. Despite her supposed income from a job at Universal Studios, Cindy Anthony accused her daughter of stealing money from them. Casey had told friends that she wanted to give Kaylee up for adoption. She didn't feel ready to be a mother, according to USA Today. Her friend offered to adopt Kaylee. Cindy Anthony, Kaylee's grandmother, refused. Still, Casey Anthony was described as a good mother given the circumstances. She and Kaylee seemed to love one another. Kaylee was never abused, and Casey was adamant that no one smoked or drank around her daughter. Yet, she did not tell anyone that Kaylee was missing for a month. Between the time they'd last seen their granddaughter and when she was reported missing, Kaylee Anthony's grandparents would ask Casey about her. Casey would say she had dropped Kaylee off with her babysitter, Zanida Fernandez Gonzalez, aka Zanny. Later, she would say Zanny had kidnapped the child. Casey told police she had said nothing because she was embarrassed. No, not embarrassed, scared, according to USA Today. Casey said she feared Zanny might hurt Kaylee if she went to the police, so she didn't tell anyone. During the trial, Casey found another version of the truth, according to Time. Kaylee had climbed the ladder that had been left against her grandparents' above-ground pool and drowned. When George Anthony saw this, he shoved his granddaughter into a garbage bag, duct-taped it as he had with deceased family pets, and dropped it in the woods to prevent people from thinking that Casey was an unfit mother. Casey had a poor relationship with the truth, according to biography. In high school, she'd lied about having enough credits to graduate. During a significant portion of her pregnancy, she maintained that she was a virgin. To querying family members, Cindy said that her daughter had just put on weight, even after she knew the truth. The investigation showed that Casey Anthony had no job. Central Florida News 13 reported that she brought the police to Universal Studios and even led them around before she admitted the truth. There was no Zanny the Nanny, as Anthony later explained in an interview. There was a Zanida Fernandez Gonzalez, but she had never met Casey and did not work as a nanny. Anthony said in an interview with the Associated Press, Cops lie to people every day. I'm just one of the unfortunate idiots who admitted they lied. According to biography, the last time anyone saw Kaylee alive was in June 2008, when Casey stormed out of her parents' home after a fight, pulling her daughter along with her. Casey soon after turned up at the home of Tony Lazaro, an Orlando DJ she had recently begun dating. She did not have Kaylee with her. The Orlando Sentinel noted that Casey and Tony rented movies at Blockbuster that night. When anyone asked where Kaylee was, Anthony said that she was with Zanny at Universal Studios, Disney World, or SeaWorld. According to ABC News, Anthony got a cheap tattoo reading Bella Vita, Italian for Beautiful Life, and Reuters notes that she participated in a nightclub's hot body contest while her daughter was missing. ABC News reported that Dr. Arpad Vaz, who worked at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory on their body farm, analyzed the trunk of Anthony's car and said, essentially jump back a foot or two. I would recognize it as human decomposition. Where chloroform is usually found in parts per trillion in the environment, the car sample had parts per million. Chloroform was also found on Kaylee's favorite doll in the car, but at insufficient levels for further testing. Near Kaylee's body, investigators found a Gatorade bottle containing a, quote, whitish murky liquid that turned out to be a cleaning solution mixed with testosterone. ABC News reported that hair found in the trunk of the car had come from a dead body because of post-mortem banding. During the trial, the Daytona Beach News Journal reported, the prosecution played an animation superimposing Kaylee's decomposed skull over a picture of her and Casey Anthony to demonstrate how the duct tape could have been placed. Jose Baez said, this disgusting superimposition is nothing more than a fantasy. In August, meter reader Roy Kronk saw a suspicious black garbage bag while relieving himself in the woods. According to Criminal Brief, after calling the police for days, he received no response. Finally, Deputy Richard Kane came but did not wish to check because the ground was wet and he had a fear of snakes. It was not until December that Kronk called again. Reportedly, the police had not investigated the area closely because the psychic told them that the body would not be there. Once Kaylee Anthony's body was recovered, the psychic implied that Kronk was involved in her death. Casey Anthony's defense later leaped on the suggestion, finding Kronk several ex wives who affirmed that he was inappropriate with children. His ex-wife Jill Curley stated, Roy probably was the one who murdered Kaylee Anthony or had something to do with it. 
In her bankruptcy filing, private investigator Dominic Casey stated that Casey Anthony noted that the back gate had been ajar and that Casey Anthony stated, We could say that Roy Cronk kidnapped Kaylee. Cronk would later sue Casey Anthony for defamation, and in January 2020, a judge threw out the case. Time reported that Jose Baez gave an opening statement meant to excuse his client's lack of credibility. He announced that George Anthony and his son Lee had molested Casey since she was eight years old. This alleged abuse caused Casey to lie frequently and appear unbothered by the tragedy. Both men were tested to see if they could have fathered Kaylee and were cleared. After dropping this bomb, Baez didn't mention it again. The prosecution called George to the stand and asked him if he had molested his daughter. Sir, I never would do anything like that to my daughter. Despite that testimony, it did have an effect on the jury. According to ABC News, Judge Belvin Perry said, There's absolutely no evidence the defendant was sexually molested by her father or her brother. Casey Anthony's trial is widely considered to be the first social media case, started by Cindy Anthony posting on MySpace about her missing granddaughter, according to Criminal Brief. Time noted that during the trial, reporters depended on a Twitter account, Ninth Circuit Florida, for their information for the first time. Nancy Grace, an HLN host, did more than anyone to elevate this case to the media circus it became, as New York Magazine noted. Spitting vitriol about Casey, damning and executing her in the court of public opinion, brought Grace further into the public eye. The case became so intensely covered that CNN and NBC built a two-story air-conditioned building outside the court to house reporters. On July 5, 2011, Casey was acquitted of every charge having to do with killing or abusing Kaylee, having never testified. She was still convicted on four charges of lying to the police, CNN reported, each with a sentence of a year in prison. With the time she had already spent awaiting trial and her good behavior, however, she was a free woman in under two weeks. It was too late for her reputation, though. The media had called her America's most hated mother. When Anthony was released, Nancy Grace said, After that not guilty verdict? Somewhere out there, the devil is dancing tonight. Anthony equated herself to Alice in Wonderland and the public as the Red Queen. The Queen is proclaiming, no, no, sentence first, verdict afterward. People found me guilty long before I had my day in court. According to ABC News, Zenaida Fernandez Gonzalez filed a civil suit against Casey Anthony. Gonzalez had lost her job as a housekeeper at a resort, was evicted, and received a barrage of death threats, all because of Anthony's lie. Gonzalez's lawyer, John Morgan, intended to ask Anthony to explain when she had last seen her daughter alive and when she knew that she was dead. Anthony's lawyers requested that the hearings be canceled because of the, quote, trauma Anthony experienced in being tried for her daughter's death then stated that having these depositions made public would put their client in further danger, and finally said that Anthony would plead the Fifth Amendment on all questions. Morgan maintains that Anthony became aware of Gonzalez's name when they both visited the same apartment complex. Two of Casey Anthony's charges of lying to police were overturned on appeal, according to ABC News. These were not the only crimes of which Anthony was convicted, though. By the time Kaylee's trial began, Anthony was already serving probation for check fraud, having forged her friend Amy Hyzenga's checks according to Dominic Casey's affidavit. She'd also allegedly stolen money from her grandmother using routing numbers she found on a check. ABC News noted that a woman who was temporarily in a cell next to Anthony's, April Whalen, was in prison because her 15-month-old son drowned in the family pool, a story that's eerily familiar. Dominic Casey attested that he had first suggested that Kaylee might have drowned in the Anthony's pool and it, quote, snowballed out of control. Well, that didn't line up with Casey Anthony's timeline of events at the time. ABC News reported that Equisearch, the volunteer search organization that had taken up the hunt for Kaylee, was assured by Casey Anthony that her daughter was alive. According to her own story about the drowning, she would have known that to be false. Equisearch filed a $100,000 suit to recoup their losses. Owing to the outrage surrounding this case, Biography noted, Florida passed Kaylee's law, making it a crime for a parent not to report a missing child. According to 10 Tampa Bay, Larry Flint repeatedly offered Casey half a million dollars and 10% of the magazine profits to pose for Hustler, with a portion of the proceeds going to child abuse charities. She never took him up on it. Meanwhile, when Playboy founder Hugh Hefner was asked if he would want Anthony to pose, he said, I wouldn't reward someone like that for what has happened. Dominic Casey stated that on July 26, 2008, Baez told him that Casey Anthony had killed her daughter and, quote, dumped the body somewhere and he needed all the help he could get to find the body before anyone else did. Baez asked the private investigator to check the swamp where Kaylee's body would be found. When he discontinued his services for Baez, according to his affidavit, that's when the lawyer concocted his conspiracy theory involving Casey Anthony, George and Cindy Anthony, as well as Roy Cronk and the disposal of Kaylee's body. Jose Baez later had to deny reports of a sexual relationship with Anthony as payment for services, according to USA Today. This is reiterated by Dominic Casey's affidavit, which states that, after getting a TV interview canceled for her, Baez told Anthony she owed him sexual favors in return. The Associated Press reported in 2017 that Casey Anthony said that, had Kaylee lived, Kaylee would be 12 right now and would be a total badass.
badass. I don't give a shit about what anyone thinks about me. I never will. I'm okay with myself. I sleep pretty good at night. People reported in 2019 that Casey Anthony was considering having another child. Casey Anthony opened up Case Research and Consulting Services, LLC, in 2021. In May of that year, she found herself in the news again after an altercation with another woman at a bar in West Palm Beach, as reported by Click Orlando. Apparently, the two had been dating the same man at the same time. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about true crime are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.